They are finally coming home. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. 11 games in 10 days, three cities, no off days. A doubleheader on Monday. Uh, a team trying to chase you down over the weekend with a four-game set. A West Coast trip in a city you've always had fits with. And, of course, your rival down on 94. There was a lot to take in over these last 11 games. They finished 6-5. and five, And for me, I'm perfectly fine with that. I know I riled some of y'all up on Twitter about this last night. Let's talk about it. Let's dive into it. Let's get debating about this 6-5 and five road trip as the Padres come to town tonight. You're locked on Brewers. You are locked on Brewers. Your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Good morning, happy Thursday. It is finally a homestand weekend. Four games with the Padres kicking off tonight at 6.40. I'm Dominic Catronio. Thanks for making Locked On Brewers your first listen of the day. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on your podcast feed or on YouTube. All the video versions of these podcasts are posted to YouTube as well. Where We are simply Locked On Brewers on YouTube. That's our Twitter handle as well. I'm at Dom underscore Catronio. I'm the statistician of Valley Sports Wisconsin. And if you are watching on YouTube, you will notice I'm back home after a, a brief hiatus in New York City working for TBS. This will happen bi-weekly now, so get used to that. But the Brewers, they lose yesterday in extra innings falling uh, to the Cubs. A, a tough one to swallow for obvious reasons. A 4-3 final because it's the Cubs, ends up being a series split, and finishes the road trip 6-5. and five. I talked about it on Twitter last night briefly, engaged with some fans, and let me get out in front of this. I love the passion. Absolutely love it. The reason why you guys are mad about a 6-5 and five road trip is the reason why I get to have a job and sit here and talk to you on your podcast feed. It's also the reason you tune into us on Valley Sports Wisconsin or listen on WTMJ, wherever it is that you engage with the Brewers. You are allowed to be a fan. You are allowed to be disappointed. You are allowed to be angry. I am not trying to change that. I am trying to remind you that this was an incredibly hard road trip, and it's just the second of three of these 10-day road trips. It's extremely rare. In fact, last season, the Brewers only had one of these road trips, and it was in August. They played well. This is when they were white hot in August, and they got to face two tanking teams and the Cubs and the Pirates, and then the Cardinals who were still trying to find their way. They went 8-2 and in those 10 games last season. They've already had one 10-day trip this year. They went 4-6 and against Atlanta, Cincinnati, and Miami. Felt like the sky was falling after that series loss to, my, to Cincinnati, right? Felt like everything was going wrong after the, the Yelich cycle and everything like that. Now they go 6-5, and five, and it's even worse. I have theories on why... Folks are angry on Twitter. But I just want to step back and remind everybody, this is exactly what you would have taken. This is what we talked about last week when they were embarking on this road trip. Right? If you can finish 6-5 and five on this road trip, you would take it, and especially how it transpired. Okay, let's go through it all, all right? No Freddie Peralta. You only had four innings of Brandon Woodruff. So he was supposed to make two starts. He only made one, and the four, four innings went short. You had no Hunter Renfro for... The last 10 games, he appeared in half of the first game before he pulled up with his hamstring. So no Hunter Renfro, no Willie Adamas for the entire trip. Uh, you had no Josh Hader for the first three games in San Diego. Devin Williams stepped in and did the job admirably. You had no Jean Del Gustave, who's dealing with a, a strained hamstring. You had no Luis Perdomo for the last half of this trip. He's dealing with an elbow effusion. Uh, you also had to have two major league debuts in Ethan Small and Jason Alexander in Wrigley. In one of those days, the wind was blowing out. In fact, three of the four games, the wind was blowing out in Wrigley. So when you take all of this, and a reminder, Jake Cousins is not healthy. You know, he hasn't pitched really since April, but that's another key piece from last year that's not on this team right now. When you step back and listen to that list one more time, you don't have your two-hole hitter. You don't have your main right-handed power threat, especially against lefties. You don't have your best defensive right fielder in Hunter Renfro. You don't have your best defensive shortstop in Willie Adamas. And you're telling me you're mad at 6-5? and What? I understand being 6-3 and heading into those final two games against the Cubs the last two days. And wanting to be at least 7-4, and taking at least one of those games. You're allowed to be frustrated about that. But again, listen to that list. 
This was not even close to the A team that the Brewers are putting out. If the Brewers have the A team, and I tweeted this too, you are expecting 7-4 and four and probably looking for 8-3. and three. It is hard to win road games. I don't care how good your team is. You're facing a legitimate playoff contender in the Padres. You're facing the team that's trying to chase you down in the Cardinals, also a legitimate playoff contender. I know the Cubs aren't great. I get that. What is so hard to get through sometimes, bad teams beat good teams consistently in baseball. That's why it's the longest season. 162 games. They won over 90 games last year. You don't think there were a few clunkers along the way there too? Remember when the sky was falling when they couldn't get a win against Kansas City? They went 0-4 against the Royals last year? Or the fact that they went 1-3 against the Tigers last year? They only went three and, uh, or rather, went, only went two and four against the Twins last year, and they weren't nearly the Twins team that we see this year. This is normal. This is totally normal. You're going to lose a couple of games you felt you should have won. You're also going to win a few games you probably should have lost. When you look at every single game individually, you're going to drive yourself crazy. That's why we take a macro look and go on the outside and say, wait a minute, they went six and five in an 11 day stretch against two really, really tough opponents and a third really hard place to play. I'm taking it. I don't care what y'all say. You can be mad at me. That's fine. You can be mad at Craig Council. Okay. Maybe he should have put Josh Hader in the 10th inning and go for that win. Go for the kill and try to win it in the 11th inning. It happens. You lose games. You win some, you lose some. That's why you play 162 games. Let's recap this trip real quick, though. As far as the numbers, I want to tell you some good, some bad, some ugly here from these numbers. Before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Rock Auto. Look, there's so many makes and models for your car. It's almost impossible for your local auto parts store to stock everything that your car or truck could need. You can be questioned behind the counter of what model it is, what color it is. Uh, is it turbocharged? All this? No, no, no. Just go to Rock Auto. Dot com. You have super easy access to everything you could ever need. You'll save time. You'll save money. 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts can be found at the local auto parts store. Or you can get it for the right price at Rock Auto, who've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. I've used Rock Auto myself for my good old little Ford Escape, man. They've got everything you need. You can use their easy-to-use website to find a solution to your auto part needs. So when you go to Rock Auto and you see their box that says, how did you hear about us? Make sure you put Locked On in that box. Let them know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car would ever need at rockauto.com. Good, bad, and ugly of this road trip. And then we'll briefly touch on this game yesterday. Again, a 4-3 loss for the Brewers in extra innings. The good, Tyrone Taylor. What a trip for him. He, he was the only player for the Brewers that played in all 11 games. He hit 275, had a 908 OPS, three doubles, three homers, 13 runs batted in. He is going to be playing, the. he should be playing at least five, six days a week. He's an everyday player now. He's earned it. He has proven what he can do. I mean, shoot, even yesterday, Craig Council moved him up in the order finally. He was batting 5-6 earlier. He finally bat, bat second yesterday with Luis Arias getting the day off. Uh, so, Tyrone, welcome to the starting lineup, kid. Congratulations. Uh, what a great, great road trip from him. Uh, other good. How about Omar Norvaez getting the bat going? He had the great finale in St. Louis. He played in seven of the games. He went nine for 23. That's a 391 batting average. Also, Jace got going at the end of this trip. Uh, he played in 10 of the 11 games, needed it, obviously, defensively. He makes great, great plays at third base. That's actually the next subject of In the Hopper on YouTube. Sorry for the delay, but Jace Peterson's defense at third is probably the most underrated part of this team, given what he's had to provide with so many injuries. With Urias out for the first month, now with Adamas out, Urias has to play short, so Jace has to stay at third. That's going to be a really fun one coming. But Jace, he went 7 for 25 at the plate. That's a 280 average. Three doubles, a triple, two homers. He had three hits yesterday. Uh, having that at the bottom of the order as a little bit of insurance, anything you can get out of the 7, 8, 9, you love it. Uh, the bad. L let's talk about the combined efforts of all of these guys falling into a slump at the exact same time. Andrew McCutcheon, Christian Yelich, Colton Wong, and Luis Urias. Those four guys all hit under 200 for this road trip. The team averaged only 4.09 runs per per game during this road trip, which isn't terrible, but it's not great either. 
The other bad is that they averaged allowing four runs a game. That's That doesn't sound like the Brewers. I mean, four runs is that magic number that we talk about so much. In fact, they scored four runs yesterday and didn't get the win, or uh, two days ago, and they didn't get the win. So now the Brewers, when scoring four runs or more, they're 25-4. and four. When they score less than four runs, which isn't shocking, they're 7-16. and 16. So when you're allowing four runs per game, you're going to go 6-5. and five. So a reminder, not the entire pitching staff was here. You're down your number two and your number three starter. You didn't have your closer for the first three of these 11 games. You don't have really much middle relief going on right now. Your middle relief... Also, kudos to Miguel Sanchez. This dude continues to pitch well, no matter what role he has been thrown into. He is really filling in well for Gustave and Perdomo right now. I hope he finds a chance to stick around because we got another two and a half weeks of being allowed to carry 14 pitchers before then it'll maybe go back down to 13 like it's supposed to. Also, Hobie Milner kind of righted the ship during this road trip. Uh, I know he gave up the sack fly yesterday, but that's some of the bad. Uh, Some of the ugly, too, was the amount of strikeouts for the Brewers. They did have a lot of uh, hits uh, with two strikes in this series and with two outs. Uh, But specifically, Christian Yelich and Keston Hira both having 13 strikeouts in the uh, 10 and 9 games that they played in. For Hira, man, he just needs to put the ball in play. It's amazing how much he strikes outs. Of the 18 outs he had on this road trip, 13 of them were strikeouts. 13. I know we talk about his swing, and we talked about this a couple episodes ago with, you know, am I too hard on Yelich? Or, sorry, on Hira? Sometimes. But until he proves that he's not going to strike out every time he's up there, he finally got his first double of the year, AAA or big leagues, in yesterday's game. It's been home run or bust for him this year. It's so odd to see Keston with his new swing, and it's just not working out even though he's being more selective. I'm rooting for him, but right now he's a bench bat. He's going to be exclusively placing righties, and when Renfro comes back, that picture gets even cloudier. Uh, also, second base was ugly for him. On on Tuesday, what was that relay? I, in, it, defensively, it's been ugly these last couple of days. Not just Hira. I mean, obviously, we talked about the outfield in yesterday's episode. Christian Yelich, a reminder, he is not a good defensive outfielder anymore. And let's take a timeout to talk about the sack fly. I saw this a lot on Twitter, that folks were mad that he didn't get behind the ball, that he didn't get over to the ball. I I want to explain something. When you go back and watch that replay, you'll notice where he was starting and how far over to his left and back he had to make that play. And why didn't he get behind that ball? So when you're in that situation, you know, sack fly wins the game. The outfield positions themselves to a spot that say, okay, anything here and in, if I catch the ball, I believe I can throw out this runner. Anything that I have to go back on, Game's over. There's no way I'm going to throw this runner out. And in my opinion, you could have put Kutch there. You could have put Tyrone there. You could have put Kane there. None of them are going to throw out Jason Haywood scoring from third. The only one that would have had a chance is Hunter Renfro. The only one. And it's even just a chance. I'm not even saying it's going to be definitive. So the reason why Yelich was playing so far in and to his, to his right and had to go back for that ball, as we know, he has a terrible arm. So he was positioning himself saying, anything I have to go back on, I know I have no shot. So the moment he had to go back, he knew the game was over. We all knew as soon as the ball was hit the left field, this this game was probably over with his, with his poor arm in left field. So I know folks were mad about that. I just wanted to explain why it didn't seem like he gave it a full effort or why he didn't go back to the fundamentals. He knew the game was over. He went back to it, made sure you catch the ball, obviously. And then throw home, see what happens. Maybe he trips on his way home. But that's why. So the ugly is the defense for me. The good, the offense from Tyrone, from Omar, from Jace this road trip. The bad, the lack of offense from Yelich, Wong, Urias, and Kutch. And then the ugly, the defense and the strikeouts. That's a really long road trip. Okay, and this is only the second of three. They got the next road trip's another three city, and then that's it. No more three city road trips for the rest of the year. And then the schedule gets a lot lighter. So a reminder, the first three-city road trip, they went four and six. The next one is right after this brief seven-game homestand. The Brewers will go to Washington, the Mets, and the Reds. Okay, that'll be... They also get an off day after the three games in Washington going up to New York 
for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then back to Cincinnati Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then home for seven games, which will be a, a crazy stretch of ten straight, or excuse me, nine straight games against playoff teams. Four against the Cardinals, three against the Blue Jays, and then two down in the trop at Tampa Bay. And it'll be Willie Adamas and Hunter Renfro and Ozzie Timmons, all reunions down in uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Mike Brasso as well, lest I forget Mike Brasso. And we get to see our good friend J.P. Fireisen and Drew Rasmussen again as well down at the trop. That's at the end of the month here in June. This is going to be the trying stretch. We identified this in April. So we're about halfway through this trying stretch. Let's check back in at the end of after June 26th and see how things are looking. The Brewers are still two games up on the Cardinals. They're 32 and 20 right now. They don't face them again for another three weeks. Let's let this play out. Don't hit the panic button yet. Don't jump ship yet. There is time. I'm sure David Stearns is working the phones for some offense right now and trying to figure out what's going on with Willie Adamas. More on that in the final segment. Next, we're going to talk about the great work uh, by Jason Alexander. I don't, I can't believe I let it go this long before recognizing how well Jason Alexander did in his big league debut, considering the circumstances. Seven innings, seven hits, three runs, only two were earned, three walks. All three walks were in the first inning and three strikeouts. Once he got the nerves out, he was rolling. Two runs allowed in the first, that was it, really. He, he really pitched very, very well. 97 pitches, 65 of them for strikes. He's, he's an Adrian Hauser type in that he's pitching the contact, mega sinker, mega changeup. I was very impressed with what he did. And for Jason, it, it just really looked like he needed to flush the nerves in that first inning. He's 29 years old, making his big league debut at Wrigley Field of all places. But he did his job. I, I don't think he's going to be sticking around in this rotation. I believe they're going to go back to a five-man rotation since they already optioned Ethan Small back down. I imagine they're going to option Jason Alexander back down as well. So for my thought, Corbin Burns obviously starting this week, and we're going to get into this awesome weekend rotation. But first quality start in a Brewer debut since 2017. Uh, if you can guess who that is, I'll just give you three quick seconds on who, who do you think that is. A quality start in their big league debut as a Brewer. Uh, it was not Freddie Peralta technically did not get all the way there, if I'm not mistaken. Freddie Peralta, in his big league debut, only threw five and two-thirds. So if you thought it was Freddie Peralta, you're actually wrong. The answer, of course, Brandon Woodruff. August 4th, 2017, six and a third, seven hits, zero runs allowed, two walks, six strikeouts, in his big league debut down at the trap. So there's a little bit of Brewers trivia for you there. Uh, so kudos to Jason Alexander. Congratulations. He gets a no decision in this one. Really quickly, two key plays that I want to talk about that were near each other, that were the difference in this game for a moment, and swaying it both ways. Bottom of the sixth inning, that strike him out, throw him out by uh, Omar to get Ian Happ trying to steal third. I thought that was the dumbest thing on the planet for the Cubs. I have no idea what they're trying to do. I know Ian Happ isn't fast, but he's not slow. And when you look at that outfield, as we just talked about with Christian Yelich's arm, why are you thinking you have to steal third when there are no arms in that outfield that scares you? None. They ran themselves into an out. He thought he had timed out the pitcher. He didn't. And he pays the price. And I, I just thought that was the dumbest send ever. Kudos to Omar for being ready for it. They get the key strike him out, throw him out. So then when Jace Peterson... Hits a double in the top half of the seventh inning with one out. You're thinking, perfect. Here's the go-ahead run. 3-3 three, three game. Base hit drives him home, right? Base hit drives him home, right? Come on, Kane. Base hit drives him Strikeout. Okay. Colton Wong, top of the order. Base hit drives him home. Base hit drives Strikeout. That, that just changed everything. You let them completely off the hook in the bottom of the sixth after that. Strike him out, throw him out. They get a runner on second and only one out, and they couldn't move him over. They couldn't put the ball in play as uh, Michael Rucker Actually, all three outs in that inning were via strikeout. The Brewers struck out 11 times yesterday. Not great. against, uh, And only one of them was against the starter, Kyle Hendricks. The bullpen did their job for the Cups, and uh, they end up with a split in this one. Let's wrap up this episode by looking ahead to the Padres. Before we do that, I want to take a quick breather to tell you about Blue Nile. We've I've talked about these guys a few times already. If you're like me and you know nothing about fine jewelry... Blue Nile can help you out. Look, if you're going to pop the question here in the summertime, I know it's that season for that. You've got milestone moments, anniversaries, whatever it may be, her birthday or something. 
you can find something as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com for your fine jewelry needs. If you have trouble choosing, if you have no idea where to look, what you'll like, they've got experts available 24-7. You can do it via phone, via chat, and you can find a memorable gift at any budget available at Blue Nile. So I'll tell you what, we can make your moment sparkle. That's straight from the copy, I promise. From BlueNile.com. So Lockdown Brewers listeners can actually get $50 off any purchase of $500 or more. This is a podcast exclusive, and it includes engagement rings, mind you. So use the code Locked On. Again, the code is Locked On at BlueNile.com. And every order is insured, it ships for free, and it arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to Blue Nile, like the river, BlueNile.com today. What a weekend this will be. This will be a lot of fun. Padres coming to town, four-game series. This will be the last you see, of course, of San Diego. And then the Phillies will come into town to follow them, and they are reeling right now. I mean, Joe Girardi is answering questions about his job status. Uh, it might be a good time to catch them, but that'll be after the Monday uh, off day. So hallelujah for off days. It's at the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's get Anthem rocking, man. This is going to be a huge series. The boys are finally coming home. They're 6-5 and five on this road trip. They did their job. They did what they needed to do. Hunter Renfro should be back this weekend. It doesn't sound like, though, Willie Adamas will be back. He has yet to play a rehab game with Nashville. Remember, we talked about him hitting an opposite field home run on Sunday with the Carolina Mudcats. Then Monday, he was supposed to play with the uh, Nashville Sounds uh, in Durham, but he actually was scratched from that game with uh, quad soreness. They had the off day Tuesday, and it was still lingering on Wednesday, and he was also not in yesterday's lineup. So... He still hasn't played a triple-A game yet on his rehab assignment. I expect that they want to let that quad flare down before they get him into a game. A minor setback, I hope, given this is what he dealt with at the end of last season. I'm not trying to sound the alarm, but the fact that Willie's dealing with some lower body injuries right now is, is troubling. If there's any expanded time, I just want to throw this thought out there. That, look, you've got Bryce Terang down at triple-A right now. And Luis Arias is going to do a fine job at short, but you can't have it continue to be a defensive liability at multiple positions right now with the way things are going in the outfield. And then if you have Arias at short, he makes some incredible plays. He also makes some boneheaded throws. I wonder when they're going to seriously consider bringing up Bryce at some point. Right now in AAA... Uh, he's played in 43 games. He's hitting 283. He's got a 724 OPS, three homers, 27 runs batted in. Mind you, he's only 22 years old. So I don't think they're seriously kicking the tires on this. But if Willie's going to miss any longer, I wonder if, like, and I'm talking like a month at least, I wonder if they're going to kick the tires on this. Because Mike Brasso, as your backup shortstop, great utility player, not a great shortstop. And having Luis Arias play every day at short is going to burn him out by the end of this season because we know what his arm can turn into at times and that it can become the thing a little bit for him. Just just throwing it out there. I don't think Willie's going to miss expended time. Let's see what this quad is feeling like today if he gets into a game today with the Nashville Sounds. But Hunter Renfro is calling himself at 90% right now, according to Clubhouse reports. So maybe he returns on Friday when he's first eligible off the IL tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, that remains to be seen. Finally, let's get into the pitching matchups. These are going to be awesome, awesome matchups. 640 tonight, Sean Manaya against Adrian Hauser. And here we go again with another left-handed starter against the Brewers. This season against Southpaws, the Brewers are just 8-10. and 10. So Sean Manaya getting the ball in Game 1. Game 2, tomorrow night at 7-10, it'll be Joe Musgrove off to a great start against Corbin Burns. Listen to these numbers. Musgrove, 5-0, 1.86 ERA. Burns, 3-2, 1.95 ERA. That is going to be must-see TV. Can't wait for Musgrove v. Burns down at American Family Field. Again, 7-10 tomorrow. Saturday, the first 3-10 game. So remember that for your tailgate planning. 3-10 game on Saturday. And it's another lefty. Mackenzie Gore, the rookie hotshot. He is 3-1 with a 1.71 ERA. Gets another rookie hot shot. And Aaron Ashby, 1-3, 2.70 ERA, coming off his best start 
of the year against the Cubs. Uh, he obviously, he just faced the Padres last week as well. So that will be a great view glimpse of the future with Gore and Ashby going at it on Saturday. And then on Sunday, Mike Clevenger gets the ball. Of course, uh, I am, for one, am guilty of forgetting that Mike Clevenger was traded to the Padres in 2020. Clevenger, 1-0, 3.21 ERA. He's back from Tommy John surgery. Eric Lauer gets the start trying to redeem himself. He is 5-1 at 2.49 ERA. A couple of weird starts for Eric. He wasn't terrible on Tuesday, but it wasn't his best just like it was in St. Louis either. So, uh, I mean, Manaya Hauser, Musgrove Burns, Gore Ashby, Clevenger Lauer, sign me up. Can't wait to be in the ballpark for all four of these games. We will have a reaction pod tomorrow, reminder of the upcoming schedule. So, remember, we're Monday through Friday generally uh, here on Locked On Brewers. So, we'll have... You know, game one reaction for tomorrow, Friday. Then no episode Saturday, no episode Sunday. Mailbag coming on Monday. And uh, just like the Brewers, there will not be a, a Monday ap- episode after. I'm not going to record an episode on the off day. Okay, so I just want to get that out there, out in front. We remind you all tomorrow, too. I'm going to remind you on Monday. But So when you go to work on Monday morning, there will be an episode waiting for you. But when you go to work on Tuesday morning, we're taking that day off. The Brewers have the day off. I'm taking the day off. Okay? Cool? Capiche? Awesome. If you're at the ballpark, wave hello to the booth. We'd love to say hello. Uh, hope you guys have a great, great weekend. I want to smell the brats as I'm walking in. Uh, can't wait to see AmFam rocking again this weekend. Seven-game homestand. Let's uh, let's bring these boys home. Let's have some fun. Padres coming to town. I'm Dominic Catronio. Thank you for listening. Be right back here on your podcast feeds tomorrow. Until then, keep on swinging. You are locked on Brewers. Your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.